Yeah, sorry, provision for doubtful debts then um, is all to be found in Chapter 15, the further aspects of financial statements. So just to recap, irrecoverable debts, which used to be called bad debts, so much easier to spell. An irrecoverable debt is a trade receivables balance owed to a business which it considers will never be paid. OK, so the amount owing is written off by reducing trade receivables and including it as an expense on the income statement. So we should know this, be able to do this in our sleep. We credit trade receivables to reduce the receivables balance and then we debit the income statement, irrecoverable debts written off. OK, that's pretty straightforward. So what is the provision for doubtful debts then? Well, we know that the provision for depreciation is where we're allowing for the fact that we're pretty certain our assets will have lost value over time. What we're not entirely sure about is exactly how much value they will have lost over time. So a provision is always an estimate. It's an estimate of something, um, usually a loss in value of something. So the provision for depreciation reduces the value of our non-current assets to give us a more realistic net book value. So the provision for doubtful debts is an estimate by the business of the likely percentage of its trade receivables which may go bad during any one accounting period. So what we're doing here is providing for the chance that some of our customers, some of our trade receivables might not pay us. Okay, we're not saying, it's not like an irrecoverable debt where they're definitely not gonna pay us. We know that they've done a runner, they've gone bust, whatever's happened, um, that we're definitely not gonna get the money from them. With the provision for doubtful debts, it's just an estimate, okay? Um, so it's different from writing off irrecoverable debts, as I just said. Here we're allowing for the possibility and not the certainty of future bad debts. I should say irrecoverable debts. Okay, so what we need to do then is create a provision in the first place. So a business might do this if it's had a string of irrecoverable debts. So it looks back over its last couple of years of accounts and it says to itself, well, on average, about 5% of our trade receivables don't pay us or 2% or whatever the, the percentage is. And in order to be prudent and to make sure that our accounts show a true and fair view, we're going to have to allow for the fact that some of our customers might not pay and we're going to create this provision to reduce the value of trade receivables at the end of the year. So the first thing we need to do when we're doing this is write off any actual irrecoverable or bad debts off. So we get rid of those out of the trade receivables balance um, so that we're just working with the ones that hopefully will pay us. So if we know that for a fact that there are any irrecoverable debts, we need to write those off straight away. That's prudent as well, isn't it? Um, and then we're working with what's left, whatever's left of the trade receivables. And then we calculate what the provision is going to be by taking a percentage of the trade receivables. So it's as simple as that. That percentage will be chosen by the business. You won't ever have to work out what percentage you need to apply. You'll always be told that a provision of 2%, 3%, 8%, 5%, whatever it's going to be, um, you'll be given that. So for this business, they've got trade receivables of £10,000 and they've never had a provision for doubtful debts before. This is the first time they've created one. So they're going to take 5% of their trade receivables, £500, and use that to create a provision. And the way we record it in the books is to debit the income statement with an increase in provision for doubtful debts, £500, and credit this provision, this newly created account, on the statement of financial position. It's called the provision for doubtful debts, which we could abbreviate to provision for DDs or prov for DDs, because I do appreciate this is a lot to write on the top of a T account or in an income statement. So the provision for doubtful debts, we increase the um, provision or create the provision by crediting that provision account, which is gonna sit on the statement of financial position and we debit expenses on the income statement. So it's really straightforward in the first year because we're just debiting the income statement, a bit like we do with depreciation and crediting the provision for depreciation, okay? So the accounts are affected in that the 500 pounds increase because it was zero to start with, it's, we've just created this provision of 500 pounds, is listed as an expense on the income statement and it's described as increase in provision for doubtful debts. And going from zero to 500, it is an increase. And then on the statement of financial position, the full amount of that provision, so the whole £500, is going to be deducted from the trade receivables figure, which is shown under current assets. So remember, in your current assets, you've got inventory, then you've got trade receivables, then you've got prepayments, bank and cash. Well, we're now going to have underneath the trade receivables this line that says provision for doubtful debts, prov for DDs would be easier to fit in um, under current assets. And this is how the statement of financial position is going to look. We're still going to have inventory there. We're going to have trade receivables of £10,000. 
take off the provision, 500 pounds, means that our net trade receivables, that's the important figure there, is nine and a half thousand. And it's that 9,500 that we're gonna be adding on to inventory. So if you remember, normally we put our current assets all in the middle column, don't we? So I'm missing a pound, there should be an extra pound sign there for the, the one on the far right. So if you remember, we stack up current assets in the middle column, current liabilities underneath it, well, we're going to be just utilizing this third column. So uh, above that, the only other thing we should have in that third column is going to be the cost of the non-current assets. Because remember, we're now spreading those over three columns, cost, provision for depreciation, and net book value. So current assets, we're going to stick in that third column, the receivables amount, 10,000, and then take off the provision for doubtful debt. So that we're showing the net amount, the net trade receivables after the provision 9,500. So we should always try and show the full amount of the receivables and the provision for doubtful debts underneath it rather than just lump in the 9,500 because if we're doing this in an exam situation it shows the examiner this is what trade receivables was and this is what we've calculated because we're often going to have to calculate that figure our provision for doubtful debts to be. And then we'd carry on underneath that with prepayments, bank, cash and then total it all up at the end of the year so these x's just represent where other numbers would normally be okay i haven't put other numbers in just to try and make it a bit clearer trade receivables and then remember that 500 pounds has been debited off to the income statement as an expense so that will be reducing our profit and the reason we're doing this is because it's prudent we're acknowledging that in past experience five percent of our customers haven't paid us um, because our credit control is not all it should be. So we're allowing for that fact, rather than just waiting for them not to pay us and then writing it off as an irrecoverable debt in six months time, we're actually making this adjustment at the end of the year to enable our accounts to show a better, a more true and fair position than they would otherwise. Okay, so the next financial year, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. So when we get to the next financial year, we've still got this 500 pounds, remember, is a provision, like the provision for depreciation, it rolls over from one year to the next. So when we're looking at our depreciation, particularly when we do um, reducing balance depreciation, we always have to consider how much is in the provision for depreciation account, how much has been brought forward from previous years. And it's exactly the same with this provision for doubtful debts. We're having to consider what's already there. So this 500 pounds, if it was in a T account, it would be sat on the credit side because it's reducing the asset, which is a debit balance. So remember provisions aren't liabilities. They're not amounts that are owed. They are amounts that reduce the value of an asset. So the provision for depreciation reduces the value of non-current assets and the provision for doubtful debts is reducing the value of our trade receivables. So bear in mind that the next financial year, we've still got that 500 pounds. It's sat there, it's a credit balance on the T account, okay? So what we need to do is decide whether we need to make it bigger or whether we need to make it smaller. We need to adjust it. Now with the provision for depreciation, we're only ever gonna be making it bigger, aren't we? We're adding more depreciation in there from year to year. But with the provision for doubtful debts, if our trade receivables is lower, in the next financial year, then we're gonna to need to reduce this provision. So if we um, adjust it upwards, we increase the provision, then we're gonna do exactly the same as we did when we created it. We're gonna debit the income statement and credit the financial, the, the provision on the statement of financial position, but only by the difference because that 500 pounds is already there. Um, if we need to reduce it, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to credit the income statement and we would show that as a reduction in provision for direct, um, direct debits for um, doubtful debts um, and then show the reduced balance on the statement of financial position. OK, so the provision needs to be increased if our trade receivables is higher at the end of the next accounting period or decreased if the trade receivables is lower. So bear in mind, we need to be consistent. That's another accounting concept. Once we've chosen a percentage, either 2%, 5%, 8%, whatever it is, we should be sticking to that. We shouldn't be jumping around doing 5% one year, 3% another year, 8% another year, because that won't be consistent and that won't help users of our financial statements to make informed decisions. Okay, so let's have a look at increasing the provision then. So this is the second year. We had a, a provision of £500 from the previous year brought forward in year one. In year two, our trade receivables have gone up. If you remember in year one, they were 10,000 pounds. In year two, they've gone up to 12,000 pounds. We're still gonna do a provision of 5% of that figure. So our provision that we need to have at the end of the year is now 600 pounds. It's 5% 
of the 12,000. Okay, so we've already got 500 pounds in there, so we just need to increase the provision by 100 pounds. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is to debit the income statement just with the 100 pounds. So, like we do with depreciation, it's just the charge for the year. So, in this case, it's just the increase for the year, debit the income statement and credit the provision for doubtful debts, which if you remember, already had 500 in it, we're now crediting it with another 100, so that will have a balance of 600 pounds in there. Okay, so that's how we do it. So whenever you're increasing or creating the provision, always debit the income statement, credit the provision account. When you're going from year to year, always check back and see how much was in that provision account, because when you look at the trial balance, it will say provision for doubtful debts, and it will be on the credit side of a trial balance, and that will be exactly the same as you know provision for depreciation. It'll be the brought forward figure, and they'll be expecting you to do something with it, either increase it or decrease it. So let's look at the statement of financial position then. Um, we know that the income statement is going to show an expense of just £100, but the statement of financial position is going to have the whole £600 on there, the 500 that was there before, plus that extra 100 that we've provided this year. So our trade receivables, the full amount is 12000 and we still hope that that's what we're going to be collecting in. By doing this provision, we're not automatically saying we're going to definitely lose £600 or we haven't identified, there's no specific thing here. We haven't said that this is a particular customer. It's just a random percentage, you know, 5% of the trade receivables. So that means that our trade receivables figure is reduced down to 11,400 to help our accounts show a true and fair view. Is everybody happy with that? Does that make sense, this whole idea of the increase? I mean, we will go through some examples in a minute, but uh, is that all right? Excellent. All right, let's carry on then. So we're going to look at year three, and I think if I remember rightly, year three is where trade receivables have gone down. So just remember that at the end of year two, we had £600. Okay. So let's imagine that receivables at the end of year three were £8,000. So what does our provision need to be then at the end of year three if trade receivables are £8,000? We need to have £400 in the provision. But if you remember, we had £600 already in there at the end of year two. So now we're going to need to decrease the provision by £200. So we do the opposite of what we did before. So instead of debiting the income statement, we're going to credit the income statement and we're going to debit the provision for doubtful debts on the statement of financial position to reduce the balance. Now, be careful here because we've got this reduction in the provision. So that's not going to be an expense now. That's going to go in other income, which you remember we add in to after the gross profit. We add it in with other things like discounts received and bank interest received, that kind of thing. So the income statement is showing £200 of extra income effectively. It's not real income. No cash has changed hands. We've just reduced the provision. So it's going to increase our profit by £200. And the statement of financial position at the end of year three will look like that. We've got 8,000 in trade receivables. Take off the £400 provision for doubtful debts. It's going to leave us 7,600. So this is what the provision for doubtful debts account would look like. This is a T account. It's like the provision for depreciation. And remember, in year one, we didn't have a provision. We were creating one. So we credited the provision account and we debited the income statement. So on that provision account, a bit like you would see with the provision for depreciation, you're just seeing the transfer to the income statement of 500 pounds, and that's gonna be a credit balance. I haven't balanced it off at the end of year one, because there's no point. We've just got that one figure in there. But in year two, we're gonna be putting just 100 pounds off to the income statement, because we wanna increase that provision by 100 pounds to make the balance at the end of the year 600 pounds. So we do the Balancing off thing, BAL carried down at the end of year two becomes the BAL BD at the start of year three, £600. And then in year three, remember, we were reducing the provision. So we've got a credit going off to the income statement, but a debit on this provision account, and it's reducing the balance down to £400. So at the start of year four, which you can't see because it would be underneath there, um, there'll be a balance brought down of £400. And then we'd look at increasing or decreasing that according to what the uh, the trade receivables are at the end of the year. Just a reminder there about the accounting concepts that are applied. Um, consistency is one of the ones we're doing the same percentage each year. So we're applying the same percentage each year when we calculate 
the provision for doubtful debts. And again, it's like depreciation. We can change it if we think that changing it will help us to have a, a truer and fairer view in our accounts. But we shouldn't just be changing it for the sake of it because we want a higher profit or a lower profit. There needs to be a valid reason to change it. Otherwise, just stick to the same methods and rates from year to year. And then our good old friend prudence, which seems to involve itself with everything, um, the accounts should report a conservative figure for profit and the value of assets.